So I got a tractor show coming up. I'm gonna need to get that tractor out of your shed out there. Well, go get it. What's that got to do with me? Well, I don't know if it's gonna run or not. It's been sitting out there for over a year. Yeah, I'm sure it's got old gas in it and the battery's probably dead. Ah, <sighs> yeah, you're probably right. Okay. Hey, kid, why don't you give me a hand getting that thing jump-started? Ah, uh, do I have to? Well, yeah, you're not doing anything. Can't you see I'm busy? Busy doing what? Picking your nose? Come on, let's go. Ah, uh, all right. Oh, yeah, look at this baby. All right, bring that battery in here. I'll crank it over, you look it up. Ugh. All right. Here we go, somewhere in here. You do know what you're doing, right? Yeah, yeah, slippers. This ain't my first rodeo. I know what I'm doing. Whoa! Whoa! What are you doing? You just fried this thing. Sorry, slippers. It was an honest mistake. I didn't mean to. Well, now this thing's junk. Yeah, uh, we'll get it straightened out. Don't worry. <sighs> pa! Help! <sighs> Come on, old man. Push! Push, you old man. Yeah, wouldn't have to push it. Somebody didn't mess it up. Oh, please. There you go, slip man. Uh, Woo. Couldn't get it started, huh? It would have started until somebody hooked the cables up backwards. Oh. Well, you know what happens when you do that, don't you? It fries the ignition system on that engine. And good luck finding a new ignition system. <laughs> you just ruined that vintage tractor. Way to go, kid. Sorry, slippers. <laughs> Great, this thing's pretty much junk now. There's gotta be something you can do for me, Terrell. Your Terrell fixes all. This this can't be the end of the 10XL. There's, there's gotta be something. Well, there is one thing we could possibly do. It's gonna take an overnight solution. Literally. Well, here it is. What's this? It's the ignition system for this. It's an upgrade. Really? Yep from Overnight Solutions. Oh, so you weren't lying. There was an Overnight Solution. Yeah, Overnight Solutions right here. And it consists of this, this module. See, Overnight Solutions says right on there. And a toggle switch. And a Bosch coil. Look at that. So, you better get busy stripping it down and reading these instructions. Now this is supposed to take the place of the ignition switch because the switch you have, this is like battery ignition now. So we gotta have 12 volts going to this coil which is gonna power this module and your switch is set up for magneto ignition type it's a solid state ignition okay so if you try to use that switch you're going to fry this new thing it tells you that in the instructions oh great so we're either going to have to wire in this switch somewhere or get a battery ignition switch to replace that one with okay. which i probably have one. Oh, perfect So, you need to start stripping her down. All right, Terrell, I got it. Cover off. Well, now we need to pop the flywheel. Okay. So, pop get that. Get that nut loose, and then make it flush with the end of the crankshaft. Take that washer off. Whoa! You're not gonna scratch the paint now. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to. Oh great! Now I'll have you and your son and my stuff up. I'm gonna try to pivot off this coil bolt right here. Okay. Who's gonna hit the crankshaft? Me or you? Oh man, I don't know. I'm scared. I'm prying on it. Hold on. Gotta get it flush. Okay. There. Oh, wasn't it bad? Oh, 
Oh, look at that. It was just a sheared key. That's all it was. <coughs> I'm just kidding. So now you got to take this off. And take this off. Alright, I'm done. So this is our old kill wire that ran from the ignition switch, which we're going to be replacing. Alright, so now we removed, we removed this. So this bolt has to go back in that holds this front mounting plate on. Now we gotta loosen these. And then here's what's called our HET module, ATT module. We have to undo the wires. Now we need to route these wires behind this plate. So let's see what kind of clearance we got back here. Any gaps back here? I don't want to pinch them wires. Let's just take this thing off. It's not like I've ever done this before. So if you just route them up through that thing and then over. Yeah. It says to make them go to the right, but then we got to put the blower shroud on. And we don't want, we don't want them to uh, contact anything. So let's see. Let's just route them through here. And yeah, there seems to be a gap back there. All right, so that'll work. Just snug them down, and then we'll make sure that we can check those, uh, they're not being pinched. Because we're gonna mount the coil probably up here somewhere. And these wires gotta be able to reach the coil. So this should be a good spot. They're gonna be a little long. I just wanna make sure they're not gonna get... What the heck? Oh, I think I stepped on a duck. And then they give you this little hollow head or Allen head screw with the Star Warser on it. So that goes into where that other mounting point was for that other coil and then see how it's curved how it's cut out to fit right up against there so this is pretty simple but we got to make sure the engine is grounded so that's where you need a continuity tester and if you don't know what a continuity tester is it's a it's a little tester that's got a battery in it, so when you touch it, it lights up, which means you have continuity. So we want to make sure that we're grounded. So we want to be able to touch it in several different places to make sure we're grounded. Because we got to have a good ground. It's not going to ground on that frame because it's about. 10 inches of powder to go down. So, we got ground here. Where's the ground cable? Here's the ground cable for the battery. So we got good ground. Want to make sure this isn't stuck back there. All right, slippers, so now you can tighten these up. 
tighten this by hand okay. with an Allen. Then we can put the flywheel back on. Then we'll mount the coil. Sweet. All right, I got the flywheel back on and we turned it over, make sure it wasn't hitting that module and it's not. So now slippers, you gotta put the blower shroud back on so we can mount the coil. Okay. And then we're gonna have to rewire the key switch. So while he's doing that, I found a battery ignition key switch. This is for battery ignition, in case you don't want to use the toggle switch that they give you with it. And this is, says for a wheel horse, but it's also for Toro 33389. Uh, Stenz has got it, 43512. And Rotary's got it, 1931. So let's take a look at the switch while he's getting that ready. Uh, 1931, that was a good year. So on the back of these switches, a lot of them are marked with letters. Sometimes the, the tabs themselves are marked and they all mean something. Like B means battery, S means starter, and in this case, I means ignition. And R is for rectifier, and A is for accessory, like headlights or something. So we're gonna come off of this tab with the wire that's gonna go to the positive side of the coil, like in the, in the diagram. So that way when we turn the switch on, the first click, it's gonna send 12 volts to the coil, which is gonna be the same as just flipping that toggle switch. So we may have to reconfigure uh, his plug. We may have to pull the terminals out and move them in different spots so we can make sure we get everything wired up correctly when we go to put it together. But that's what those mean. Those letters all mean something. And by rectifier, that means you know your charging system. So I need to put this rubber boot on this plug wire that they gave us. So in order to do that, you need to lubricate it up. Now you can use some kind of spray lubricant, you can use soapy water, I'm gonna use some WD-40. Just spray some on there. And that'll make it easier for us to slide that over that terminal, see? Otherwise, if you try to do it dry, you're just fighting it. And frust making it frustrating and you're gonna get mad and you're just gonna start throwing stuff. So now we can plug that in, and then we can shove that on there. Right, done. Now we may, we may have to shorten this up even. So I may have to pull this off, uncrimp that, cut this wire down, and shorten this wire up. But we'll see, that all depends on where we're gonna mount it. But that's how you put that little boot on there. You're done? No, I got it on, I didn't put any screws or anything in. All right, so where are the head bolts? That held that on. So those went there? Yep. All right, so the only spot, let's get this old kill wire out of the way now that we're done, and here's our, our wires for that. So the only place I could find that, that this bracket will line up is right here for the coil. So I found some Briggs and Scranton head bolts that have that stud on top. And here's the part number in case you're interested in buying those studded head bolts. So we could stick them in there. 
to save this bag so I can get me some more of them. Actually, because this is pretty thick, to make it level, let's put another, because we got enough threads, let's put another one of them thick washers. So I got all these thick 5 16 washers that come with them crawler head gasket kits that we replace all the time. I've got hundreds of them thick washers. Got the socket slip dog. And we'll just eliminate this. But you know what this is, don't you? That's, that's for lifting the engine in and out. That's all that is, is like a lifting lug. That's Tecumseh's lifting lug. So now we could just stick that right on top of there. I was hoping. Yeah, there we go. So this is a little heavy here, that screw. So we're going to have to grind that down a little bit. What if you just flip it around? If that nut, if that nut's removable, yeah. Got a screwdriver? Doesn't fit in there very good. Let me get a better screwdriver. Jeez, old man. You just flip it around. Got a smaller head on the other side. See? <laughs> yeah, that's not that nut's removable. So we'll just flip it around. I thought it was a captured nut. The only captured nut is me. All right, we're going to need to amonicate this uh, bracket a little bit because we're not going to be able to turn the nut on this one side. It's too close, this slot. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a slot in here. So I'll get my carbide tool and we'll run the slot that way a little bit so we can just slide this over a little bit so we're able to tighten the nut. So we got to do some amodicating. <laughs> that should be enough. Needed that little bit. There. Now we got our coil secured and it's off the plate a little bit. Tighten that down. We'll run our wires to the coil. You could even shorten these up if you wanted to. You know, if you wanted to give it a cleaner look, you could cut them and crimp on some new ends. So the red goes to the positive side of the coil, the black goes to the negative side of the coil. And then we just need to run a red off of our new key switch when we stick it in there. All right, slippers, so you can tighten this down. Okay. And like I said, the coil wire is kind of long. We could shorten that up. Oh but we'll do all that once we get it all all done and we make sure everything works then we'll we could always come back and shorten shorten all the wires up yeah don't want that happening right so we'll shorten that coil wire and then if you want we can shorten these up i don't know these look like they're pretty 
pretty good. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about those. But you'll have to take those nuts off. So you might want to highlight the positive side symbol that's on the end of the coil so you know which one's which. And then, you know, you can always turn the coil whatever way you want by loosening that screw. And then we took these off. And what I do is I save these tabs that are on a lot of those uh, three and four post solenoids, starter solenoids. Sometimes we have to take them off. So I save them. So red to positive and the black wire to the negative side and then I'm going to put this tab on there. The lock washer and the nut. So that way we've got a, uh, a tab to mount the wire that's going to come from the ignition switch to feed the 12 volts to here and then we'll put the nut and washer on here and we'll just leave these off I'll save them though those will come in handy maybe for something else all right so we're getting pretty close yeah it looks pretty cool so now we need to put in our switch so slippers go ahead and take the old switch out We'll see about rewiring it. Well, but the only thing is, is that it would be sad I don't like get to use this awesome keychain that you sell in your online store. What do you mean? You just put it on the new key. Oh! The keys are all the same, you knucklehead. Oh, yeah, that's head. right. Oh, that's a good idea. I, I was thinking it was going to be a toggle switch or something. No. We're putting a key switch in it so we can keep it original. That's why we're going with this. We're eliminating that toggle switch that came with the kit. Okay. You can save that switch. It's a yeah. nice switch. It's got like a little red light yeah, on it. Yeah, it's got like a little red LED in the end of it. Sweet. Well, yeah. Yeah, it says in the baby. instructions to find a battery ignition switch, which is what I did. Oh, okay. Well, I didn't know. That's why I was pointing out the different, what the different symbols on the back. So just get that switch out. No problem, pal. No wonder you guys mess this thing all up. Unsupervised, like children. <laughs> so here's the switch we took out of Slipper's tractor, and you can see it's marked M for magneto, S for starter, L for lights, G for ground, because you can see that this tab is going to the case, so it's grounding to the case, and B for battery. So we really only got to move a couple of wires around. We need to take the starter wire and move it up here and then the rectifier we're not going to use at all so we're going to take this ground wire out all together and the reason we're not using the rectifier one is because this tractor's got a starter generator on it and it's got a voltage regulator that's all underneath here that's all wired in separate and then a for accessory is our lights so we don't have to move that wire and battery is already in the right spot so we're just going to take this wire out and we're going to move the one from S to here and then we're going to run a new one you know we're going to take the magneto one out the white wire out together and then we're going to run a new wire from here to our new coil and then we'll put the battery in and Fingers crossed, we got spark. So I got my little handy dandy tool here for removing these, releasing these tabs. So we're gonna release this tab here in the top. Cause that was our magneto kill wire, which we're not gonna use. And then over here, this other white wire here we're going to release this is our solenoid wire or starter wire let me bend the tab back up so it'll lock back in and that's the one we're going to move into where the magneto was 
because that's where our S is for starter. Our battery's in the right spot. And our accessories in the right spot. So here's our ground wire. We're going to release that because we don't need that now. And that was for the to kill it. We had to have a ground. So we're not even going to put anything back in there. So we're going to use a purple wire. And I've got these crimp on terminals which I got at our, a good hardware store, or not hardware store, auto parts store. You're not gonna get these at AutoZone or Advanced Auto or O'Reilly's, any of them crappy auto parts stores. You gotta go to a good one like a Napa or a uh, Auto Value. And then I got this crimping tool. This is a mountain brand crimping tool that I also bought from a good auto parts store and it comes with all the different dies for crimping so let's see is this the one we want to use yeah stick that in there to hold it Twist the wires so they don't fray on us. Insert it into the terminal. Give it a crimp. There, there's your dinner. Look at that, nice factory crimp. And then, uh, Stick it in to where it goes for ignition. The ignition spot, I, which is this open one here on the back. Make sure our tab's in the right spot. You'll hear it lock in. Hear it click. All right, there's our dinner. I said we're not gonna use that one for the R at all. All right, slippers, you can reinstall that switch in there. Sweet. And you know what? This I noticed this, uh, your headlight wire is like the original headlight wire. And it's all hard and, and brittle and starting to crack. So we'll make, a new, we'll make a new one. Using our crack tool since we got it. Let's get that wire out of there. It's all hard and brittle. Yeah, I think it got pitched too. The battery was in there. Yeah, it's all hard. It's the original wire starting to crack. We'll make a new one. Well, it's all back together. Let's see if we got spark. We got our inline spark tester hooked uh -huh. up. Come on, scared? Cross. I am a little bit scared. Man, that thing fired right up! Oh. oh, man, that's awesome. This is the greatest news. So if you're interested in this ignition kit, if you got one of these old Tecumishes with that solid state ignition, Get a hold of Dale over there at Overnight Solutions. Yeah, he just saved my tractor. Yep, and now it's upgraded to a better ignition than that original, which is what you gotta do a lot of times on these old machines. I know a lot of y'all like to try to keep things original, but you know, one thing you can do is kind of maybe hide the coil. You know, if you want to keep that original look, you can put this on there. Maybe you could hide it somewhere. Maybe hide it down there somewhere. I kind of like it like that, so. Yeah, I'm leave right it. on top. Looks cool. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Terra fixes all. I'm Terra. This no, is. S-Man. Or Slip Slippers, Dog. Slip Dog or whatever. Slips. Follow us. 
with your antique tractors on Facebook and Instagram. <laughs> Go to our web store. We got all kinds of stuff we sell. We don't sell this kit. You'll have to get that from Dale, but we sell all kinds of other stuff. And as always, there's, there's your, your dinner. dinner. Woo! Yeah! 10XL, back to life, baby! Yeah. Woo! Hooking up the cables wrong. What uh, a disaster. Man, yeah. That was not fun. Something as simple as that, you know. Ruin your whole day. Exactly correct. Since we put that on, seems like it starts way easier now, runs a lot better, got more power, just all around. I'm glad that it got messed up so we could put that on there because really made a big difference. Thumbs up, baby, there's your supper.